Hello, and welcome back to the SWC Group Stage Draft Show. Now, if you're wondering what's going on with this draft show, why are we holding here? First off, it's Jay Mack and Charlie here on the desk to help you kind of understand what's going on. All four of our teams from the playoffs had already figured out, you know, they're going to be in their quarterfinal spots. They've got their seeds one through four, and now we've qualified four teams from this event this weekend. And it's now going to be up to the captains from those playoff wins to determine who their opponent is going to be in the quarterfinals. It'll start with the number one seed in the Sticks Fairman, then it goes to the Leviathans, the Warriors, and then the Dragons immediately after that one. Well, the Dragons, they, in air quotes, kind of pick their one. It's whatever's left over, this, what the Dragons end up going with. And we've got our first representative, it's Paul from the Sticks Fairman, here to make his decision on who his opponent's going to be. That's right. I've got Paul standing here as first seed. You get first choice. So you got four teams on the board. How are the ferrymen feeling? Where are they going? Uh, we are going to be choosing the Solar Scarabs. The Solar Scarabs. So of everybody, what what made them stand out to you as the the team to choose over like the Kings, Hex Mambo, Ravens, etc.? Uh, I think all the teams are pretty strong, um, but uh, I, I don't know. It was a it was a hard decision, and just we just we just chose. They're all pretty strong teams, but we just felt like Scarabs. Maybe we just have a slightly better matchup into. Well, it's exciting to know because now we've got at least one matchup at Worlds. I guess thanks for your time, man, coming in, choosing the team. We've got Ferryman versus Scarabs up first, but we'll go back to the desk as we uh, we swap Paul out. So Ferryman <laughs> Scarabs for our first quarter final. Maybe not the pick I was entirely expecting to see drafted up in the first one. What are your thoughts on this matchup, Trelly? Well, I mean, if you're thinking about all the teams we just saw, I'm trying to get in the mind of Paul. It's, uh, it's scary up there because I feel a lot better at Smite when I think like him, but... I don't hate the matchup, right? If, that, if you're starting this, the idea here is you start your quarterfinals off strong, you get an, quote, easy win as opposed to, like, you know, you're going for the easiest win, so then you can build momentum and get a championship run going. That's the team that Fragment felt they were the strongest against. Man, if it's craziest thinking that the Solar Scarabs were the, quote, unquote, you know, maybe weakest or easiest team out of this bunch, because we had maybe a pretty... Maybe matchup-wise. Yeah, I guess maybe yeah. it's, the you know, they think they have the better early versus them. Because right. you look at the Solar Scarabs, they were a lot more tw geared towards that late game. Early wasn't so strong, so if the Ferryman had been maybe practicing some of that early game, could be at least a good option for them. But we do have our next representative ready to go. It's going to be adapting from the Atlantis Leviathans, choosing his opponent. That's right, I've got adapting here. One team already gone in the Scarabs, so I'm kind of curious, where are the Leviathans going with the next choice? We will be going with Hex Mambo. Hex Mambo. Now, for a while there, you got to play in Europe against a lot of these guys as well. Does that factor into your decision as choosing them as an opponent? Yeah, I mean, we have some experience. I mean, at least I have a lot of experience playing against those guys and, you know, with some of them. So we just felt like it's going to be, you know, one of the easier matches of us to prepare for. And you're keeping it fair by making sure that the EU players and EU teams are on different sides of the bracket, just in case things go crazy. They can meet each other in finals or something like that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah some EU banter. But hey, we've now got it. Leviathans going up against Hex Mambo, a fun one that's going to be fun to watch. Thanks for your time adapting. We'll go back to the desk. So that's now both SCC teams chucked up and drafted away by the SPL team. So Leviathans and Mambo for another one of our quarterfinal matchups. That was our second seed in the Leviathans. And as mentioned, they'll be on the opposite ends of the bracket. It'll be one and four on one side and then second and third seed on another. So yep. now, depending on what our next selection choose, we could have that obvious potential to see another SCC versus SPL a little bit later on. So we'll have to kind of see how things go down. I mean, what are your right. thoughts kind of on, on this matchup with Leviathans Mambo? Well, considering how this has gone so far, it tells me that the SPL teams that we have not seen in two months have been sitting back watching this tournament and saying, yeah, the SCC teams have looked good for this tournament, but we notice a lot of things that we can systematically dismantle. We're going to farm better. We're going to fight better, whatever it may be. So, yeah, despite the fact that we gave a lot of praise to Mambo and Scarabs, these SPL squads, they're like, hey, man, we saw some mistakes that we can capitalize on. I mean, we did see what the Highland Ravens at least were able to do up against Hex Mambo. Yep. So not the closest of matches other than that one. Right. So we'll maybe get to see how some of that one goes through. But we do have our third representative. We have Genetics from the Oni Warriors here to pick his opponent. That's right. I've got Genetics. Only two teams left, both teams that you've played countless times throughout the year. Uh, so where are you and the Warriors going for your choice? So as much as I want to be Hurrywind's, uh, you know, as, as much as I want to be Hurrywind, we're going to pick the Kings for the quarterfinals. Now, picking the Kings for the quarterfinals becomes even more interesting, right? And, and I think at one point, Mike ribbed us because we kept you know, joking about this, but a little bit of a grudge match for you, or are you thinking of how their performance went this week? Like, what's, what's coming into it? No, obviously, Kings were an amazing team to be with um, for the majority of my career, so I'm not, like, obviously looking forward to beating them. But, you know, we had to pick a team, and I feel like they've been weaker than Ravens this entire weekend, so... You got to beat somebody to get to the world championship, right? Well, it seems like it's been again something that that they've struggled with this year or this week specifically. We got to see and their qualification. 
And, and this is actually something that's interesting, is last year you guys were very, very dominant. We've seen, though, teams that, that have this kind of ramp up sometimes are a little hotter. Are you worried because they got a little extra games under their belt going into Worlds? Um, no, I don't, I don't think that's a, a reason to worry. You know, I mean, the Kings last year for us, like we flicked the switch on and we were dominate everyone. Uh, they could do the same thing again and we could get knocked out first round. But for right now, I think this is our best bet to, to win the World Championship a uh, second time for me. So. Well, it seems like it's going to be a fun matchup. Warriors versus Kings to start things off in the quarterfinals of Worlds. Thanks for your time, Genetics. And we'll go back to the desk. Man, we get a hell of a storied matchup in a quarterfinal. Camelot Kings and Oni Warriors, the team that Genetics leaves, now going to battle up against them for that quarterfinal. This yep. should be a very hot match to watch out. For. To be fair, if this, if like, if the Warriors picked first and they just grabbed them, that would make a little bit more sense. But considering the options were, you know, Ravens or Kings, the Ravens play better this week. That that, that is just a, a blanket correct statement. So I can see why that that was their choice. Oh. Highland Ravensville. Pretty much now left with what's going to be happening and someone that we haven't gotten to really see at all this year. And we get to hear from here on Mike for the first time, the coach Cherio, all the way from Egypt now here to uh, make a selection for his final matchup. That's right. I got Cherio. I guess you can make the selection, but also we kind of know who it is. Ravens that's going to be going up against you guys. I don't. I'm just, let me check my math on that one. <laughs> uh, this is a team that you guys have played countless times. And a team that historically the Dragons have a really good matchup against. So how do you feel about that being your quarterfinal? Yeah, I mean, we kind of didn't know who to expect. Could have been any any team. I think they all looked really well. But I think we're happy with every choice we get. We just got to beat anyone really to win Worlds. So, yeah, we're happy with it. Now, they looked pretty dominant in their games this week. And the only stumble I think they had was that one game against Ex Mambo. Otherwise, very, very controlling. So what kind of things do you think, you know, to, I guess, anticipate from them? Or do you think that they're going to be kind of warm? Are they a threat? Like, how, how much of a, I don't even know where I'm going with this one. What are you expecting from the Ravens specifically going into next week? Um, just more of the same that they're doing. I think this team relies a lot on Scream and Haddocks to kind of make plays. And if they're not having a good game, I think it uh, should be a lot easier. They also have the three-timer, so you never know what Zap's going to bring. It is World's time, so maybe he'll pop up. We'll find out. That's always a scary feature that can go in there. It's something that you guys are going to have to face. Quarterfinals, Dragons, and Ravens. One that feels like a rivalry without being the true rivalry. It's going to be entertaining, but thanks for your time. Glad to see you here, and we'll see you more at Worlds. But for now, we'll go back to the desk. I'll be honest, I got jump scared, but I would get you know, a surprise visitation from Cherio. But it is Worlds time. Everybody's getting around here into the studio, and now going to be getting ready to go to Arlington, Texas. We have our fourth and final match, yep. which will be that Jade, Dragons, and Highland Ravens. And I think... Coming out of this event, maybe a bit of expectations for how well the Ravens have performed. You probably don't want to play against a team that's doing real hot, so right. leaving that one kind of for that last pick. But we do have the bracket for Worlds available for you here in just a moment. We can take a look at that, but now we can kind of jump ourselves in and see exactly how Worlds will look. The bracket you're looking at is how Worlds will play out. Match number one, our top seed, Six Ferryman, their opponent, the Solar Scares, as chosen by Paul and the squad. Jade Dragons defaulted to the Highland Ravens, those will be the teams on the top side of the bracket. Look over to the opposite end now. The Atlantis Leviathans chose Hex Mambo as their opponents for their first quarterfinal. And then, as mentioned, the Oni Warriors and Camelot Kings, which might be the most interesting matchup that we see amongst there just for the story that can be told through them. So two SPL versus SPL, one on each side of the bracket there. And I'm thinking that we might be having and we might be in for a really strong semifinal, even grand finals matchup. This is some pretty big competition coming out into this world's world championships, Trelly. And we couldn't ask for better matchups, man. This is exactly what world is all about. The best of the best competition, battling it out on the world stage. This is what we've been waiting for, I mean, all year, right? This is what I get excited for. If you're a Smite fan, you, you couldn't have asked for anything better, and you know exactly where it's all going to be happening live. I mean, there's two things that are the best time of the year for a Smite fan. The start of the new season and the Smite World Championships. And I'd wager that Smite World Championships are probably the best time of the year to be a Smite fan. Getting to go to the, uh, to the arena, sitting there in the crowd with all the thousands of fans, cheering on your favorite team. The energy of the crowd just gets so infectious out there, and it makes for such an amazing event. So I'm so excited for the Smite World Championships. That's all we have here for the Smite Qualifiers. We'll make sure to see you on Friday when we kick everything off in Arlington, Texas on January 12th. Thank you so much for watching. On behalf of myself, Trelly, and everyone behind the scenes, thank you so much, and we'll see you in Texas.